All right, so we have our tables, and we can now do things to them uh, with what's called field rules. And what I do is I just click on something, invoice header, for instance, and then I right-click on it, opens up this, and then you can see that there's all kinds of things, one of which is edit field rules. And that brings up a whole dialog box. And it says it gives you the columns that you've created in a drop down box. And this one all I have are two. One is invoice number and one is invoice date. So the invoice number I know I want to auto increment because I have to have a unique invoice for each invoice, obviously. Uh, so I'm going to choose the invoice number and go auto increment and I'm supposed to be able to do something down here. Let's see if I lower this a little bit. Drag that down. Um, a descriptive name and a field description and I'm sorry about this uh, recording software and other stuff and you're supposed to be able to go over here to data entry and enter a uh, initial value. I've been unable to figure out how to do that so what I what I did figure out I could do was I could close and save this. So I'll close, it'll bring up the save. Yes, I want to save this field rule. And then just open up the table, invoice header. And I'm going to open that up as a table. This is the default table. And as you see, it gives me a default number. And so I want to identify this as invoice. So I'm going to just go like this and go, oops. I and V, and then I'm going to go 0, 0, 0, 1. Oops, 1. So that's invoice number 1. And now it will take that, and every time it will increase it. And I suppose once I use a, let's see, 100, once I use 30, uh, 99,000 records, it will increase the V to, so now I'm going to go ahead and close that, and it'll ask me if I want to save it, which I do. And that's that field rule. I'm going to skip the date field rule for right now because uh, there's a way to make it auto increase. Actually, is that in the form? It might be in the form. The date is already formatted, and we'll go to here to invoice items. Whoops, that's the wrong one. I'll close that. Go here to invoice items, right click. Edit field rules. And once again, it gives all the list of everything that we have. The inventory ID will be imported. Um, product quantity will be a calculation. Price and extension will also be a calculation. Extension will be quantity times price. And uh, that'll be in tomorrow's video because I've forgotten how to do it already. We'll just do some basic formatting stuff today. Uh, product, what's in there? Edit field rules. Product ID. Now the product ID is also going to be a incremented auto increment field. And I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Is there anything else I need to do in this for right now? There's a, well, let's see. We could do proper typing, so let's do that. Uh, so we'll go here to product, and I think it's under transformations and case convert. It gives you a bunch of uh, things. This is so you know the people that are always type in caps or always type in smalls, it all gets automatically corrected. And here are your choices right here, and it gives you a sample, and uh, you can go with. Um, I think I like low in Word. Actually, just Word, because uh, if there's a Mac, somebody or other, I think that's the one that works the best. So I'm going to just go with Word, and we'll go ahead and save that. Which I do to save the bad way by closing, and it asks me if I want to save. Yes. Uh, versus going up here and saving it. And let's see, what else do I want to cover in tonight's thing? We're not going to do any mathematicals, um, but also, oh, uh, we're going to go back into product and set our 
initial inventory item. So I'm going to double click on product and you see it defaults to zeros um, but we're going to go, this is not inventory, so this is product, so we'll just go PRO. That way I can identify pretty easily what is counting up and when you get to combining these fields. Alright, so, so we'll start with number one there and we'll save it. Well, that was interesting. Did that save? Yes, no, it did not. P R O. Oops. P R O. Maybe I shouldn't use O. I'll just go P R at this one. And number one. I'll go enter just to make sure that takes hold and close it. There we go. Save it. Yep. So each time I uh, increase my product or enter a new product in there, that should enter uh, increase the product number automatically. Um, there's a few other things that you need to see. Uh, for instance, uh, let's they have uh, default forms and default tables for for each of these tables. And what you do is you eventually create your own forms that look much nicer, but it's nice that they have default forms. So we'll take a look at one here. Remember this category, it had invoice number and date. Uh, and we'll also make it the each of these forms so that when they open, they automatically increase the number uh, to the next invoice. That That's not set up yet, but it will be. And basically, uh, that's pretty much all I have for tonight. Yeah, hopefully that's around 10 minutes. I'm not really sure I didn't look at the time. But uh, we have our tables, and uh, then we need to also uh, do something called, let's see, where is it, new sets. And that's where we combine various tables. So let's do a quick one, just, just for the heck of it. We'll do a quick set just to show you what it looks like. Um, so here's an invoice header and if I open up the form it looks like this it only has the items from that form but if I create a set it'll have everything from the set if I click on the default so let's do a quick set new new set the primary table that would be called a parent table and so if I were doing invoicing the invoice header would be the parent table because there can only be one invoice, but there could be many invoice items, so that would be a child. So let's just do that real quick. Comes up with an invoice header. Then you can add links. Okay, and then it gives you all kinds of things here. So I'm just waving my mouse around, mouse around here. So the first child table will be invoice items. And the child key will be invoice ID and it will be a one-to-many which is the default versus a one-to-one -one. so in other words one invoice can order many uh, invoice items but if I had say a member that would go along with this we're not creating a member table but if I had a list of members or customers uh, obviously only one customer could go to an inventory number so that would be a one to one but we don't have that so we'll just stay with this for right now and I'll just show you really quickly so this is what it looks like you can see that there's the parent if it had only one line it would be a one to one but this has two so this indicates this is a one to many um, and then we'll go ahead and save this save the change to the set yes and we'll give it a New York uh, unique name here and we'll just call it uh, test T -S -T, uh, set okay so we'll click OK on that you'll notice that I type proper typing but in this thing they always make these things uh, all smalls I'm not really sure why they do that but they do and uh, so anyway if we wanted to open this up as a form or a browse rather 
actually form. Let's do a form. You can now see that it has the items from those two that we joined together. There's the invoice number, there's the date, product, quantity, price, and extension, all of which can be manipulated. Uh, that will be it for today. Uh, I'll see you the next time. Hopefully you're not too bored with this. But uh, partially why I'm doing this is also so I remember I've already forgotten a lot of stuff, and I can come back and look at this myself. It's a lot to learn all at once, but uh, it's it's fun. So that's it. Signing off.